Hallelujah. Glory.
Am I on now? All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Well, God is good. Amen. Turn around and just look at somebody and say, God is awesome. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I guess what that was a, an entire uh, uh, set y'all wrote. Yeah, okay. So you're, you're another four songs. Y'all got a project. <laughs> amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Get you in the studio. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Put it out there on the internet. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all can't go on tour. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're glad to see y'all this morning, and Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And um, praise God. Um, you know, next Sunday, next Sunday was the, um, uh, we'll have service next Sunday, and then it'll be New Year's, okay? Well, no, no, the Wednesday. We do the Wednesday. We're going to do the Wednesday um, um, Trying to remember. Trying to remember. <laughs> right. So, right. So the twenty first, yeah. And then from there to New Year's we'll be we'll be out. But we will be having on New Year's Day, okay? Hallelujah. Um, as we you know, uh, this was a question we had in our uh, our regional directors meeting the other day, you know, the you know, what do you guys do? And I said, you know, now uh, some people, they had their services, you know, it's a big deal to have, you know, the whatever. I'd, we have kind of taken the, the uh, position that um, you could go be a witness to your families. Amen. And you're going to have unsaved loved ones hanging around and take the opportunity to share Jesus with them. Um, but you couldn't get into church, go be the church. Amen. Now, somebody posted on some, you know, we're, we're more whatever than anybody else in the world, you know, committed to anybody else in the world, that if your church don't have service on December 25th, go find a real church. No. Well, if you don't have church 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, go find a real church. I'll get you a real pastor. No. Okay? I mean, you know, look. Calendars don't mark reality. True that. All right. I thought, what a bozo statement. You know, we're more spiritual than anybody else. You know, um, our purpose is, you know, we understand that this, that your families, some of your families may not see anybody any time of the year, but when you show up. That might be the only Jesus they see. Amen. So go be the light. Amen. Hallelujah. So, but then, you know, and listen, if you, if you have four services on Sunday, because it's your high holy day and that's how y'all do it, amen. well, praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That bunch that don't have, if you don't, they say they're December 25th, if they don't have it on January 6th, they're not a real church either. Because that's an Orthodox Christmas. Okay? And so we can't, you know, you got you to do both if you're real spiritual. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, enough said about all that. We just want you to know that our, our calendar will be Christmas Day. We're not having a service. The following Wednesday, we're not. And that's those, that's the two services. We're not, and and the, that prayer service that week. Okay? We won't be having. Just so you will know. All right? Um, we may not have prayer service the um, next week, not this week, but the following week, because we might be traveling. Um, you know, a lot, lot, a, lot, a lot of our families, we're out of, all off work for two weeks, so we may be we're, we're traveling and that kind of thing, trying to see parents and grandparents and all that stuff, be, you know, and uh, before we hunker down for Christmas in the following week. I want to I go get all that and go see everybody, but say, hey, I love you, do all that, and then come back and hunker down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Eat, sleep, and be merry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we sure love you. And, oh, we got, listen, next year, we're, we're, listen, we're, we're, we're ending this one up. We're getting geared up for next year, and hallelujah. So enjoy your downtime because we're going to hit the road and running. Amen. 
Glory to God. Well, it's time to re receive the offering. If you need an offering envelope, there's still a few out there. I have the thing to take to the printer sitting on my desk at home. I just haven't gone to the printer. <clears throat> Y'all pray and intercede and have the intercession. Y'all aren't praying enough <laughs> that God would move me to the printers. <laughs> Hallelujah. I guess the next best thing is we give it to one of the kids and say, Y'all go take care of it. Huh? Yeah, delegate. I, I like that. I like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, but otherwise, if you're giving online, go ahead and get that, uh, uh, you know, ready with your cash app or PayPal. Um, we are not really using PayPal that much. I think I got one person who uses PayPal occasionally, rarely. Um, maybe two in, in a year we may get. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's cash app or checks and stuff. So, um, Anyway, you ready to give? Jesus said, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be blessed as you give. Amen. Father, we thank you as the tithers and givers reach forth into the kingdom of God to bless and to support and to undergird that which is called of you. We thank you, Father, that they're blessed as heaven's windows are opened unto them and you empty out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive in jesus name amen amen go ahead brother joe hallelujah on the in-house amen glory to god uh check on anybody that you, you know you know of uh, you may know well a pastor someone, someone, and let us know stuff amen if you know somebody's not doing well you know you, you know maybe you you called them and said, hey, you want to come to church? And they said, well, I'm not feeling good. Let us know. Okay? Some people, now listen. Yeah, um, we're, yeah thank you. Thank you for giving. Um, I, just, I didn't want Joe to hang around and wait thinking hey, I, was, I was going to do something else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, we, we still have some old charismatic type, old word of faith type people who think you can't share because it's a lack of faith. A prayer request. Okay? I mean, you know, you ask them how they're doing. I'm doing great. And you're not. Okay? Well, is that a positive confession? Or you just ain't going to say you're doing lousy. You know? Jesus gave us a prayer called the prayer of agreement. Y'all know that? That if any, any two or three of you agree as touching any one thing, it shall be done. Now, how can I agree with you if I don't know. Now, that's the, that is the word of faith version of the unspoken request. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the old Pentecostal thing. I don't know if any other churches do it, but I know the Pentecostals do it. How many got a spoken? We, we'd actually say it that way. We'd have any spoken request. Well, brother, pastor, sister, so-and-so is homesick, and she, she need, you know, needs for us to pray for her. And now, brother, pastor, this... <clears throat> And, and we get two or three of those because we're about to go to corporate prayer in the church. All right? And then they go, how many unspoken requests do we have? Everybody in the room will go like this. You have an unspoken request. I, I see it on Facebook. Please pray for us. God knows what it is. Well, how can I pray? How can I agree? I can't agree with you if I don't know what it is. Agree with me, brother. For what? Like brother, one, one woman came to Brother Hang and said, Brother Hang, I want you to agree with me. He said, about what? She said, do I have to tell you? <laughs> well, he said, I'm not going to pray for you if you don't. Amen. I mean, it's like me getting caught my wife getting in the car. And go in and I say, let's go out to eat. She says, where are we going? I, I, do I have to tell you where we're going? You know, we're in agreement, aren't we? What, about going out to eat? Yeah. About where we're going? I don't know. You got you to come up with something. Amen. Now, I, I, I occasionally like cheap, greasy seafood. She don't really care for cheap, greasy seafood. 
You know, I think it's the bomb sometimes. <laughs> she don't like the grease in the back of your throat when you get done eating. You know, got to drink four Cokes to, to burn it back off. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, if we're going to pray in agreement... We're going, to have to, we're going to have to know what each other's praying about. Anyway, so we, get, we, get, we got that left over in our, our circles that people won't tell you when you say, how are you, know, is, how are you doing? Can, is there something I can pray with you about? Because you, you know something's going on. Oh, no, everything's just great. <coughs> Come on now. That situation I knew about where some, one, one of the um, people – well, was in the hospital with COVID in serious condition. And the spouse wouldn't let anybody know what was going on, didn't want you to call, didn't want you to pray, didn't want anything because it was, it was uh, um, not a good confession to say what they're dealing with. Hey, we can't come in and under, undergird. None. We found out somehow through some channels what was really going on but they didn't want to give it up get, didn't want to give up the information because they thought it was unbelief don't be stupid amen amen and let's face it if you know you're that bad off you need some help well i don't want to undo my confession now that's one thing when you you know that you believe and you've received and you're, you're speaking faith about where you are. It's another just to think, well, if I say that, it's going to be unbelief. Yeah, but, you know, how can I agree with you? <clears throat> Amen. We need each other. So, so don't hide. Or, or some people think that the pastor is going to think they don't have any faith and think lesser of them. We preach, this isn't my sermon, may end up being my sermon, but it's not my sermon. We preach the ideal in order to get people to move up, but we understand between where you are and the ideal, there's a, re there's a real, there's a, there's a reality that we're not always going to be hitting that mark 100%. And we might be there at 25%, 30%, 70%, 80%. 80%. We, we, we may be somewhere on that journey. Hallelujah. And there's nothing wrong with saying I need some help while I'm heading that way. Amen. I will not think lesser of you if you come to me and say, Pastor, I'm sick as a dog. Okay. Now, let's, let's do something about that. Now, you know, I may ask, what you've been meditating on? NyQuil. Okay, that's fine. Alleviate the symptoms. Now, what are, you, are you spending time in the Word? Now, well, you know, I ain't felt like, okay, fine. What, what, are you, what can you believe? Well, I, 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 I believe if you'll agree with me, I'll get better. Well, then let's get to where you agree. Amen? Amen? I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to kick in the seat of the pan and say, you unbelieving dog, get out on out of here. Go on down to the unbelieving church. I'm not going to do that. Our, our, our goal is to help people grow. Amen. Now, we may want to pull you up to the higher place, but if you can't get there, let's go, let's go where you are. Dad told that. You tell us about the woman. You know, she's in the hospital. And... Um, you know, she had a, like a big tumor or something in her, in her, in her stomach. And, you know, the, back then when they did surgery, like they, could, they just cut you wide open. And he tried, to, he tried, and she, she, had, she just couldn't believe, she, couldn't, she just finally admitted she couldn't believe to be healed supernaturally. He said, what can you believe? She said, well, I can believe that the, that the doctors will do a good job and, you know, and, um, you know, I'll have, a, and, I'll, and I'll come out okay. He said, well, okay, we'll agree there. Hallelujah. And then he said, and, and just added to it, that she would be um, uh, recover so quick they would think it was a miracle. And they did the surgery, cut her from the, cut her wide open. I mean, got in there and did all this. And they don't do, they didn't have liposcopic surgery back then. I mean, it was just rip, cheap, do what they got to do, and then sew you back up. And it was weeks of, of recovery. When he came to the hospital the next day, and that doctor's running out, going, 
I'm going to tell you, preacher, I'm going to tell you, that's just a miracle in there. That's just a miracle in there. We tried to give her morphine. She didn't want it. We gave her one shot. I said, because you've got to be hurting. She said, I'm not hurting. She took one shot the whole time. He said, her belly cut wide open, and, she, and, and she's not in pain. She said, that's just a miracle. Now, after that, her faith rose, and he, he didn't have any trouble getting her healed of anything. Just lay hands on her and get her healed. Okay? So, when you, if you're going through something, don't hide. That's what the family's for. We're to come together. Amen? And don't, don't, be, don't and listen, faith is not a merit badge on the Christian scouts of America. Anybody a Boy Scout, you had that sash, or the Girl Scouts, you had the sash, you put your merit badges on it. There's not a faith merit badge that you get to put on there, and if you've got that, then you're, you're special. It's the way we live. Amen? And whatever level you're at, we, we, want, to, we want it to work. And if, you, if it needs a faith booster of agreement, then we'll agree. There is no condemnation. Amen? <clears throat> there's, no con there's no shame. There is no shame in saying, I need help. Are you here? Now, we've preached it in a way in the past that put people into shame. You know? We, we would quote Wigglesworth. Well, Wigglesworth was an evangelist. He wasn't a pastor. And something, you do some things in special meetings you can't get away with in a church. You can't kick people in the seat of pants, seat of the pants. You hear, we hear Brother Hagin's stories about how he did stuff in the, in the meetings. Go back and listen to how he pastored. He may have to sit with people uh, three, four, five, six weeks to try to get them over. Okay, he says we can't do that in a meeting. He said we're trying to get as much faith in the meet, as many people as possible in a special meeting. We can't do what I did when I pastored in a meeting. Take, you know? So there's no shame. There's no condemnation. Amen. We are a family. <clears throat> We're the family of God. Amen. Amen. All right. That's just that one was for free. We won't take up an offering after that. We're not going to take up an offering because of any special word anyway. You know that. We don't believe in. Uh, oh, by the way, now is that in America that's going on? It's overseas somewhere. There have uh, all those who, who, who've gotten a little thin. If you want to go to this special meeting overseas, eleven $1 hundred dollars to go to the Holy Hair Oil Anointing meeting. They're going to regrow your hair because they're going to take back what the devil's stolen. <laughs> Got a list of speakers. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. That's to, get, that's to get into the meeting for the anointing to flow and to get your hair back. And then you buy the, ho the holy hair oil that you put on. It's in South Africa, okay. That kind of stupidity discredits the real move of the Spirit to a lot of people's out there. And the, not us, we understand, but out there it would discredit the real move. And that's what that's all about. It's sent by emissaries of the devil to discredit the reality of the real move of God. So, um, you know, but don't worry about it because the real will, will come forth and it will rise to the top. Hallelujah. Last week we began. We're, we're, all right, let's, let's move. I know some of y'all sitting around going, holy hair oil. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> you were thinking that, weren't you? <laughs> Aren't you, aren't you glad I'm not wearing Robin's little tights up here? <laughs> oh, my. We would do. We could start a whole new move of the church. John 4, 23 and 24. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such 
to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Last week we spent our time talking about out of the spirit, being, you know, worship coming out of the spirit and not out of the soul. Now, that, now that, let me say this. W real worship, spiritual worship will affect the soul. But you can worship out of the soul and not affect your spirit. Or you can go through the motions out of your soul. Be emotional. Okay? It's coming out of the emotions and not out of your spirit. So, see, the spirit will affect the soul, but you're not, going, you're not, you're not really true worship if it's soulish. And we're just moving people. Because, see, we, we've seen this. We talked about this. You can move people with music. We can move people with smoke shows. We can move people with light shows. We can move them with the dance teams and the banners and the, come on now, all the crazy. But it doesn't affect your spirit. Or it doesn't benefit your spirit. That's, that's, it'll affect your spirit, but it won't benefit it. But if it's coming out of the spirit, it will benefit the soul. And the soul will get in on it. But it has to start in the heart, okay? So true worship starts in the heart, okay? So we must worship him out of our spirits, not just, okay, uh, we, you know, we have, um, I, I know the, um, uh, the, some of the liturgical churches have, I think it's called catechisms. Okay, they have catechisms and then, you know, you have responsive readings. You have a lot of liturgical things that go on. Okay, and, and a lot of that just becomes mimicking a reading, and, and, and it's all head. It's, 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 it's intellectual. It's not spiritual. It's not coming out of the heart. See? And that's what happens when we institutionalize something. All right? Um, and so we have to understand it's got to come out of your spirit. Secondly, and in truth. All right? In truth. Now, we, we, uh, we kind of go, what is truth? Well, you know, thy word, sanctify thy word, thy word is truth. So we could go, you know, uh, you know we want to um, worship him out of the word. And there's some validity there. But the reality is this word uh, translated truth in the uh, in Greek is ali, uh, aletheia. Okay? And it, it looking in different commentaries and, you know, Greek concordances and stuff, um, we, we start getting a, an idea of this word. We could go through the, we could go through the Septuagint and the classical and all that. Um, <clears throat> we're not doing a class, so, okay, you know, how it evolved and all that kind of stuff. But it begins to take on this, it, this, this kind of concept. Um, it, it denotes that which is true and correct, <clears throat> that which is certain, on which one can depend, on which is pure and genuine. Now, that's from the Complete Biblical Library. Um, Vine says it is the reality lying at the basis of an appearance. The manifested, veritable essence of a matter. Okay? And, um, you know, verity is the quality of state of being true or real. Something that is true, especially a fundamental principle or a deeply held belief. And this is where we get to this. We have to have a deeply held belief that God is genuine, that God is real, that God is a fundamental principle of our life. Amen? We have to have, you know, we don't, <clears throat> we don't come to church and have an emotional experience that I'm saved, and now we come sing these songs, and we do this and we do that because that's what we're supposed to do. You know, I mean, now, you know, I mean, let's face it, guys. I mean, you know, we, we're going to start worship off. We're just, you know, all the young people are stand there and jump up and down like pogo sticks. You know, now 25 years ago, we all came in and did the Tulsa two-step. Then, you know, before that, we, we pre, pre breakfast that that was a Pentecostal chicken. Okay. But, I mean, now you got, you got services where they just start out jumping up and down. Okay, you know, not, not because they got moved in, in their spirit. It's just what we do. It's, it's, it's this kind of song, that's what we do. We jump up and down. Mm -hmm. You know, you know they just pat, they, I can't do it. My, uh, uh, I don't want to uh, pull something, doing something stupid. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a negative confession. Listen, I know where I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to go out here and run five miles. Why? Because I we we'll probably get into the parking lot. You might have to come out there and say, come on back in, Pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, okay, so and everybody goes, well, that's cool. That's the kids. That's, you know, we, we know. Let's not leave it there where they're just doing it because it's the thing you do in church. The exact same thing you do in the world. Because that's what you do at a rock concert or whatever. See? Worship has to be initiated in your spirit on the, and, and, and on the basis of the reality of a deeply held belief of God's existence that he is God. Amen. He, he's, he's not the dude. He's not the big guy. So we use all these terms and all this stuff. And, and, and in doing so, we bring, we bring God down to a human reasoned persona. Instead of letting God bring us up to the revelation of the gloriousness and the wonderfulness and the greatness of his existence. Amen. Amen. Hezekiah, I saw the Lord I was high, who was high and lifted up, and his train, his glory, the train of his glory filled the temple. And I said to myself, I, Whoa, I am undone, for I have a man of unclean lips, hallelujah, and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You know, he, he got that revelation of the gloriousness of God. And he was in awe of the splendor and the majesty and the greatness of God. He's not the dude. You don't find in the Bible when Jesus shows up, they go, hey, dude, or hey, Jude, or anything else. Jesus would appear, and they would fall at his feet. He had to tell them to stand back up. See, we, we, uh, we took a revelation of who we were in Christ and our position in God. And Satan, if he can't keep you out, will push you too far. And pushed it over to where Jesus was just one of the guys. So we could be comfortable hanging with him. And what we did was we brought him down out of his majesty <clears throat> and focused more on the humanity. Remember, he took on the form of human flesh. <coughs> <coughs> For the express purpose of becoming sin for us who knew no sin. But he returned to his state of glory. Hallelujah. When you look at him in the book of Revelation, he doesn't look like your picture on the wall. Hallelujah. Are you here? He's ablaze with the glory. Hallelujah. Peter, James, and John got to see a little hint of it on the Mount of Transfiguration. He lit the light out, praise God. Can somebody talk to me out there? Y'all don't, you, this, is, this is a Pentecostal kind of church, ain't we? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Jesus is Lord, and God is God. And we must once again regain the awe of the splendor and the majesty and the greatness of the great I am. Hallelujah. That when we enter into his presence, it should be a lifting presence. Not bringing him down to us, him bringing us up to him. The purpose of righteousness and the impartation of righteousness so, so we could live in a 
whole new plane, whole new sphere all together. Not bringing him down here and, you know, we just pal around with God. I'm, you know, well, me, me, me and God are buddies. It's cool. You know, we, all this terminology we began to use constantly erasing that element of awe of who he is. And so if we're going to worship him, not out of our soul, but out of our hearts, not out of a religious duty, see, the other side of that, 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 becomes, you know, you worship him so you don't get barbecued. Don't want the lightning coming out. Boom. <laughs> Grease spotting you. Okay. Well, I got I to worship God. I mean, it's part, you know, if I want to make it to heaven, I got to worship God. Now, we're, see, we're, 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 we got to get out of those places and become the true worshipers. I don't care if you've got a rocking band up there. I really don't. I don't care if you've got, you know, the coolest light show on the planet. Don't, please don't bring a disco ball in. I mean, there's, there's people who just, who, who, who will be doing the Travolta out there in your church. You know, and, and they'll be doing one, do it, saying it's, it's the Holy Ghost. They want nothing holy about it in Saturday Night Fever. And it won't be on Sunday morning either. So when we understand that we are to worship God out of that sincere, deeply held belief of the reality of his existence, of who he is, then that has to change our worship. It has to change our worship. Yes, I know the Bible says come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive help in the time of need. But it didn't come say come arrogantly. See, I, I, the boldness there has to refer to a confident assurance of your acceptance in his presence. Not, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I can go up there any time I want to. Now listen, I've been around here, been, do, been on this uh, journey a long time. Brother Bill Longer on the Word of Faith Circles. And we have seen the crazies. Seen a lot of marvelous good things. But then the crazies showed up. And they've done crazy crazy. They put the cray cray back in crazy. Okay. I mean, I'll never forget Jerry Savelle saying, let's face it, folks, there are some squirrels in the camp. Mm-hmm. And he was right. I mean, you, you, you want to find the crazies? Go to the charismatic stuff. They show up out of the woodwork, like holy hair oil in conferences. Okay? And, and people, you know, and we, we create things that are not, really worship oh, I'm, I'm sorry interpretive dancing in leotards on the platform the guys are not looking up there going oh that I just worship the Lord can I be real blunt they're looking at the butts and the tights let's be real hello they got problems in the flesh, and here you are up there twisting and shouting for them to the Lord. Oh, we're going to run through the church with banners. We've done so many crazy things that now people have gotten to where they don't really know what worship is or who they're worshiping or why they're doing it. It's what we do in our church. I love it when the Holy Ghost comes on somebody. But I love it when the Holy Ghost comes on somebody. Amen? Y'all here, you're going home. 
So how do we, what, how do we get there? Amen? I mean, Joshua says, now for, uh, therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Now, the Hebrew word truth here is emeth, E-M-E-T-H. <clears throat> Aletheia in the Septuagint is used to translate emeth. So <clears throat> they're trying to use that same word to convey the same thought. Worship him on the reality of uh, he's the real God. Put away gods, which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and, whom you, uh, and serve you the Lord. Um, for Samuel 12, 12, 24, only fear the Lord, serve him in truth. Same thing, Emeth. With all your heart, for consider how great things he's done for you. Hallelujah. Um, and so we, we're told that's how we're to worship God, in truth. Deuteronomy 10, 17 says, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh rewards. It is declared that God is the God of gods. He is the Lord of lords. Deuteronomy 4.35 says unto thee it was shown that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. 439 says, Know therefore this day, consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven alone above and upon the earth beneath, and there is none else. The word of God just begins to declare that God is God. <clears throat> uh, these are all, 1 Kings 8, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. 1839. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is God. He is the God. The Lord, He is God. Hallelujah. God is God. He, let's, and tell you something, He don't ever change. He's, Ecclesiastes 12 tells us, one, remember how the Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days came not, <coughs> Come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them and those things. Why? Because God is God. Isaiah 40, 28, very familiar scripture. Hast thou not known? Hallelujah. Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Hallelujah. Can you say glory to God? <coughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. 44, 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. Verse 8, <clears throat> fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and have not declared it? Ye are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. 44, 24, thus saith the Lord the Redeemer, he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, and spreadeth above the earth by myself. 45, 5 and 6, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, <coughs> though thou hast not known, <coughs> known me, that thou may know, that they may know from the rising of the sun from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else else. 45.22, look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 10, 10 and 12. But the Lord is the true God. <clears throat> he is the living God, an everlasting King, at his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. 
Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He that hath made the earth by his power, and hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched forth out the heavens by his discretion. Hallelujah. And then Joel says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. God makes it clear. He's God. When Jesus came to redeem us, he did not come so God could be like us. See, man was in a fallen state. Jesus took that on so we could be like God and we could dwell with God and we could fellowship with the Father. We came, he came to lift us up so and redeem us out of our destructions and take us out of that place. Adam walked <coughs> in glory before the fall. He could be in the presence of the Almighty God. Adam did not make God into the image of man. Man made God, uh, God made man in the image of God. Stop trying to worship him in the image of man. Stop a human concept of him. And understand he is God. Hallelujah. He's majestic. He's glorious. He's pure. He's holy. He's unreproachable. He's loving. He's merciful. He's gracious. Hallelujah. And out of our hearts, I stand, I stand. In all of you, holy God, I've got it. for to whom all praises are due. I can't get the tune in my head right now. Hallelujah. I stand, I stand in all of you. Okay, I just totally blew that one. Anyway, this, you know, that think of that. When's the last? Now, now listen, just, just ask yourself. You stood in awe of God. And so much of what's going on out there in the world and in the church world, when, when are we standing in awe of God? Not coming with the arrogance of, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, you know. I'm grateful I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I am thankful that he redeemed me. I am, I am uh, humbled by his mercy. Hallelujah. That he reached forth even while I was dead in trespasses and sin. And he raised me up together and made me sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That he sent forth the spirit of adoption into my heart, whereby I could cry, Abba, Father, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And, the, the, and behold what manner of love he bestowed upon me that I should be called a son of God. Yeah. I stand in, the, in awe of the mercies and the greatness of God who would love me in that state, hallelujah, and make me alive with Jesus, praise God, to stand before him justified by the blood of the Lamb, glory to God. Hallelujah. That flowed out of Emmanuel's veins, hallelujah, and washed us clean from our sin and unrighteousness and established us as children of God. And that I can come into his presence as if I had never sinned, as if I had never rebelled, as if I had never turned against him. Stand in awe of the greatness of a God who instead of judgment 
and annihilation offered me love and reconciliation. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to treat him like a dude. Let me tell you something. I don't see anywhere in the Bible when they get to heaven, they act that way with God. Come on now. I don't see anywhere the Bible teaches that we do that. I know the four beasts and the four and twenty elders, about every 30, 40 minutes, have to hop up, throw the crowns at his feet, and say, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Hallelujah. For thou hast redeemed us to our God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and made us under our God a kingdom of priests. They just can't take it. I mean, these guys sit around crowns on and they just can't take it. How majestic. How majestic. Sandy Patty song, I love that song. How, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. Amen. Anybody didn't know, if you don't know who Sandy Patty is, y'all go back and get her old stuff. Because that was, we shall behold him, you know, that, that, that range era. They just, heaven's full of worship. It's full of worship of God. I don't see scripture teaching us there's, it's full of this casual human inter, human, human minded interaction. Soulish, you know, that we're pals. Now, understand, well, Abraham is called the friend of God. That, that phrase in Hebrew is an Eastern term. You can't understand it with a Western mind. The phraseology actually means like, like a blood covenant partner of God. Okay? Now, we're pals. We hang together. Jesus called them friends, but it was, it was not in the sense, you know, that you, you, we're going to go sit by the lake and sing, bye, bye, Miss American Pie. Drove the Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Them good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, singing this will be. I mean, that is not our walk with Jesus. Not going to drink the whiskey or rye either, but, or wine or whatever that word was. I don't remember what it was in the song. Okay, I, that never made sense. But anyway, okay. God, how wonderful He is! And probably some people have trouble with worship. It's because we train them so much to view it from a fleshly standpoint instead of getting people into the spirit and coming out of their hearts and seeing God in his majesty. And we know this. Listen, we, we, I, I, how, I don't do stuff without sounding too critical, but the Christian music industry is just that, an industry. They want to sell. They want to sell money. They want to sell music. And so what do they sell? They sell what moves people. Whatever has the right sound. Now, there was a day in Christian music that heart sold. The song, the music that was, it may not have been, you know, world class musician, da-da-da-da-da, it was the heart of what was being sung, sold. Not anymore. It's got to be a production that's, you know, it, that matches anything that, that the world puts out. Well, we should have the best. We, you know, well, yeah, but when you're hiring the best who don't have the right heart, what's the deal? Am I right about it? <laughs> you know? I go back to some of the old stuff, and I listen to it, and I think, you know, even in the earlier stages of, of, of uh, contemporary Christian music, there was a difference 
because the, because of the heart of it. It wasn't about how can we sell, how much can we sell. It wasn't the record labels taking over and going, okay, now we got to do this style because you know, you know that, that, that. Or we got to have this kind of music because it sells. So now we 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 brought it to where a lot of the music isn't about God. It's about lyric lyrically it stinks as far as doctrine, but musically it's great. And so we all go, oh, that's cool. Let's do that song because it's got that, you know, everybody loves that whatever. Everybody loves that beat or everybody loves that style or they, that, that, that whatever. And we, we, they, the group's going to come to town, put on a big concert, and we all go to the concert. And, you know, we, it's, it, you can't tell that from the world. They could, they could get it there and sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And you wouldn't, people wouldn't care cause of, because of all the stuff that was going on. And we cannot train Keep training people that that is worship. If you want to call it entertainment, call it entertainment. Stop calling it worship. Amen. Listen, we, we listen to preachers who can entertain. Now let's just take it out of worship. Let's come over here to preach them. If they can entertain right, it don't matter what they say. You know it. They got a catchy title. If they can sweat, they can spit cotton. I love preaching, but let's face it. Some of that stuff becomes entertainment. And if all we're doing is entertaining, then why don't you just go get you a speaking circuit? Well, I can't hide under the guise that this is God if you do that and get big offerings. Okay, got to catch a title, got to catch you this, got to catch you that, you know, got to, got to do, you know, cool stuff, got to be hip. God's looking for the true worshipers. And we in the church have to step up to the plate and let the true worshipers rise again. It's, you know, well. Churches ain't going to be as big. You know what? I, um, Elijah felt the same way one day. He was the only one. God said, I've reserved to myself. Now, God reserves to himself for the time of need to release the, res the reserves. And as we can see in our country and in the world, that the world's way that's infiltrated the church ain't working. Well, we got big churches. But we're not changing. People aren't true worshipers of God. They're infiltrating with Worldly narratives and worldly ideas and worldly agendas. And the presence of God and the move of God and the transformative power of God is being sidelined in lieu of an of a image and becoming whited sepulchres on the outside but on the inside full of dead men's bones. But God's reserved to himself a people. So God's reserved to himself a people. And he will release those people. Hallelujah. We are in the birth pangs of the end of all things. Paul said, hold on. I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, to, in birth until Christ be formed in you again. I believe um, that there is a there is a a birth pain. That the, the, there is an upheaval taking place. Whereas people say, "Well, our church is like welcoming you," no, because they're not looking for no answer. 
answers. There's, going to, there's, there's coming a, a, a shift supernaturally because people are beginning to understand that they've gone with the cray-cray and the cray-cray ain't fixing it. And so now they're going to start looking for what's real. Well, how do you know something has to come? For the, for the return of Jesus and, and for, for, the more <clears throat> for the end gathering of the great harvest, it has to come. And Satan is fighting it in every way he can. Do not think for a second that all this stuff to do with the LBGTQ plus nutbag stuff, crazies, has anything to do with their identity. It is a spirit of darkness sent to destroy the church. Congress just codified same-sex marriage. House passed it this week. Senate passed it before that. Um, Mr. Emissary of the Devil is going to sign it. I believe the president is the emissary of the devil. His agenda, his policies, everything he does is demonic. I believe that many leaders in that party are emissaries of the devil. And they have, they've gotten people who follow it. You know, what do they say? Um, blue no matter who and red till you're dead. People have, have, have party identified so much. Well, Christians, you can't party identify. You must God identify. Okay? And, of course, you know, the, the 12 Republicans said they would make sure there was protection for religious whatevers. You know they're coming after the church. They're not going to be happy going, I can be married and, you know, and, 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 and uh, live my life. They're going to come into the church and demand acceptance and recognition. And when you don't, they're going to sue. That's what, why? To shut the church down. They don't care about being a member of the church. They want to shut it down. Mm -hmm. And any voice that, that says they're wrong. And so they're going to do it. And then you're going to have to fight in court and get it all to the Supremes and all that stuff to, to win. It's sent by the devil. And dumb Christians vote for it. Well, because I'm, you know, blue no matter who. You vote for it. They're coming after your church. Well, we, we, we'll accept. You can't accept it. Man, Paul wouldn't even let a guy live with his stepmama. Hello? Turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so their spirit would be saved in the day of the Lord. And it must have been pretty bad. Because <clears throat> Paul had to write back in the next letter and say, unless he be overcome with much sorrow, accept him back. It must have got rough on that dude. Hello? So come in, but that's okay. Because every time they persecute the church, the church grows. They, they, the church went after the church. They scattered them abroad, and they went out and took over the world. Went all over the place. Hallelujah. So, they, I mean, they're coming. That's all right. We know what to do. We know how to live. We know how to walk with God. Amen? You know? And... uh God is our, re is our re reward. God is our fortress. God is our strong tower. Hallelujah. We have known nothing about persecution in this country. We're beginning to see a little bit. A lot. Actually, a lot. They didn't go after that. They didn't go to that baker because they really wanted that baker to make their cake. They wanted to make, a, make him do something they knew he didn't want to do. They didn't go to that florist because they had the best florist in town. They wanted to make that florist accept their perversion. This, this, that's what it's all about. And I'll be honest with you. If Trump don't ever do anything else in the world, he put three very conservative people on the court that messed up the whole other party's idea of what they wanted to do. They wanted to put the most perverse crazies on the court they could get on there. Because if they did that, then, they, then there's no stopping their agendas. 
in the natural. So what are we going to do? Because, see, our time is coming to rise. The big church, listen, I'm not against big churches, but the big church <coughs> model of compromise and watered down and whatever for numbers and success is ending. It's going to be little small churches all over the place who didn't bow their knee, who are still praying and seeking God. God don't have to have 15,000. He can take 120. Are you here? And they that have turned the world upside down have come hither. Amen. Hello? There, there's, there's something realigning spiritually. Because hunger is, now listen, here's the thing. We got other nations praying for us. Now, Africa especially. Africa prays for America. Because we're so crazy. Are you here? They're having moves of the Spirit. They're building, I mean, and people are showing up by the <coughs> tens and hundreds of thousands and getting saved and there's revival going on all over the continent, all over the place. Things are taking place supernaturally. It's moving into places. Jesus is appearing to, in Muslim countries to people, and they're getting saved. And they're praying for America. Amen. And all over the world, the true worshipers are rising. Because God is God. Hallelujah. He doesn't change. He's majestic. Hallelujah. And we're going to run out of cool, neat ideas and actually get back to God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Why is this important? Because the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him. And those that hope in his mercy. Proverbs 15, 8 says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Yeah. Isaiah 43, 21, The people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. 1 Peter 2, 9. Are you ready? Are you ready? Got it, Bill? 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar. Peculiar in the Greek means purchased, a purchased people, that you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The worshipers. The praisers, the true worshipers, the true praisers of God, rising up, hallelujah, as light in the world, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, it's upon us. I said, it's upon us. Hallelujah. I, I, um, I, um, I am reminded. You know, the Bible says fight a good warfare with the prophecies that went before thee. We also are reservoirs of anointings and I've shared this before I'm going to close in this I know we're running a little bit late but that's all right you're true worshipers you want to hang out till Jesus comes anyway <laughs> and not burn your roast I got it okay 
the Lord showed me one time, and, and actually, uh, the first time Mark Brzee came to our church back in 88, he was ministering at the end of the service, he, and he began to speak over me that, you know, I don't know if he used the word reservoir, but I think it was something along that line, that I was, I'm just going to use that word reservoir, of anointings. Because I'd grown up Pentecostal, and I was a Pentecostal Word of Faith guy. That wasn't normal in those days. Okay? They rejected all Pentecostalism. You know, we had to be Word of Faith. We were, we were different. We were, you know, we, ours was intelligent. We were, you know, we didn't do the Pentecostal chicken. Oh, yeah, you did the Tulsa two steps. So stop it. You know, it was more spiritual because it was Jewish. Now, Dr. Phil has a slot for you. <laughs> You're an idiot, okay? <laughs> and I began to meditate on that. And as the years have gone by, even more so, because, you know, the old Pentecostals that usually hands on us at the altar who were like one half step removed from Azusa Street people, they grew up under people who had been in Azusa Street laying hands on you and ministering to you. And then, you know, um, being under Pentecostal, old Pentecostal preachers who had ministered and laid hands on people and made deposits and um, so forth. Then coming over into the charismatic word of faith realm and, you know, and then be those things began to happen. And you get thinking, you know, Brother Higgins laid hands on you and, you know, that one's laid hands, you know, Lester Summerall and, you know, you began to think of all these people who laid hands. Now, I remember Brother Summerall, when he laid hands on us, it was a year before he died. And he was going everywhere he could to try to impart to young ministers those things that were in him. That's, that was his plan. He was planning on going home. And he was going everywhere he could and lining up. He wouldn't let people come up in line that weren't ministers. You had to be a minister. It wasn't that he didn't want to minister, that, 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 that other people weren't important. He was on a mission to impart Wigglesworth and those things, that those anointings where Wigglesworth laid hands on him and imparted that anointing. He was going laying on hands on ministers imparting. Hallelujah. Amen. And I remember I was at a, a um, we were at Alumni Week 1982 in Rooker Memorial Auditorium. Which was the main auditorium? Which was the main auditorium until they built Raymond Bible Church on the left side on the front row. We were on the second row because right in front of us was Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, uh, Mom and Dad Hagen, Ken and Lynn Hagen. They were sitting on that row, and of course Janie's sitting there checking out Gloria's toenails. weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> she's looking out, looking at her shoes, looking at her toenails. How she's got her toenails done? Checking out Sister Gloria. And Brother Copeland was ministering. And um, he, uh, he began to prophesy about the glory that was to come. Wow. You know how those services are. When, 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 the, when the, the spirit of prophecy is there. And, you, and, and you're just, they're just ministering in it. And, and you're just so caught up in that presence. You may don't even know every, all, everything that's said. Okay, and um, and so I'll use this side because there's nobody over here I can get up here. Well, you know, and you know, so he's up here. And he walk. Well, I, I, I got a copy because I'm over here. He walks over here. We're all standing. And you know, Gloria's here. There's a space because that's where he was sitting. Okay, and I, I think I think Pastor and Sister Lynette were here, and, and Dad was down there, and um, we're we're just you know. We're like, we got good seats. I felt like Jesse. <laughs> that was before I even knew Jesse was. And Brother Cub walks up, and he walks up to the seat like this, and I'm standing right there. And he's prophesying about the glory of God. That man's got some blue eyes. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's the truth in the bluest. And he looks right in my eyeballs. Now, he's in the spirit, you know, and I'm standing there like, Young Raymond student, you know, former graduate. I'm out here on alumni week. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, I'm like in heaven. 
Well, what the prophet of God. <laughs> but he's prophesied about the glory of God and the coming glory. And he reaches up and takes his hand and goes, and you and I, and pats me on the face, we'll see it together. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> right on over. There's a glory coming. I said, there's a glory coming. Hallelujah. And then when I went to Czech Republic 10 years later, 10, 12 years later, I'm speaking at the end of a class up there. And I began to speak in tongues, really not prophesying, just speaking. And as soon as the class was over, one of the students ran up to the overseer and they're all like shook up because I was speaking in Czech. Hallelujah. And uh, he got somebody over there to interpret and said, you know, what she, she said? She said he was speaking in Czech. Well, what was he saying? He was saying, I see it. I see it. It's coming. It's coming. The glory is coming. It's coming. It's on the horizon. It's, it's coming. I said, it's coming. The glory is coming. Hallelujah. And it's going to it's gonna be like a tsunami that sweeps. Hallelujah. This glory that's coming. And there won't be any demon in hell. There won't be any narrative. There won't be any political party. There won't be any devils that can stop what God's come to do. Because the glory is coming. Now, there'll be those who resist it. And instead of being blessed, it will consume them. The same power that opened up the Red Sea for them to come over and cross on dry gown, opened up the earth and swallowed them who worshiped the idol. The glory's coming. I said, the glory is coming. Fear not. Do not look into the natural and see the darkness that's being spewed by media and by evildoers and know that the light, the light, the light of the glory, the one who rides on the waters, his glory is his train, cometh. And he comes in great majesty in great power, he will sweep the earth. And great shall be the end gathering. And the hand of wickedness shall be stilled. Oh my. We haven't seen. We haven't seen that come yet, but it's a coming. I said, it's a coming. Well, I said, that was 40 years ago. That means it's closer. It's closer. It's sweeping the whole earth, but it's coming to America. I said, amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We thank, oh, my, 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 my. So you get a rustle, come by the rustle on the sinner, come to that cave. Ella manka, ella kuchu si ko doda katate. Jengle indi bi ki bi ko. Set your heart. Set your heart as a worshiper. Set your heart on me, says the Lord. Look into the things of the spirit. Peace will overtake your heart. Assurance will overtake your soul. And an understanding 
of the purposes of God will be revealed. For I will come in great majesty, and I will come in great glory, and I will do my bidding and my purpose. And harvest shall come. Harvest shall come. Harvest shall come. For the great end gathering is at hand, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. See, he's got a people. He's got a remnant. He always reserves to himself a people. Hallelujah. Who will obey him. And serve him with purpose. Amen. My, 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 my. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. It comes. The glory's coming. Hallelujah. I see it. I see it in the spirit. It comes. By the way, I don't speak a lick of Czech. Still don't. I couldn't even figure out how to say hello. It was so bad. Or goodbye. I just greet him. Because that, that language is messed up. Just so you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't, I'm not some linguist who picked up on some stuff. And, oh, he just, you know, figured it out. You don't figure out, check. Their, their, um, their saying is that when God's passing out language, he took what was left over and gave it to them. It was so bad. They, they didn't really like their own language. Hallelujah. We, <laughs> I, I saw it. It's coming. Hallelujah. Take heart, church. Take courage. Don't, be, don't fear and don't be dismayed at what you see going on. For the Lord will work his purpose. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Let's stand and just thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're glad y'all could join us today. Next time we're together, uh, we Wednesday night. We'll be here next Sunday. Um, remember these words, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your blessings.